It was just a couple of days ago that the acquisition of Fox's movie and TV entertainment district was officially completely purchased by Disney. This, of course, was a deal that had been in the works for quite a few months now. And, of course, let's uh, get this out of the way that Disney has not completely bought up all of Fox. The, the Fox News and Fox Sports Divisions, Fox Business and the like, and all of those type of cable channels are still under Rupert Murdoch's ownership, which does not surprise me in any way, because it's clear from the beginning that Murdoch has always cared more about being media mogul more than movie mogul. Uh, just, uh, um, I, well, I, I might, you know, what I might bring, uh, 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 let me see if I can do this, uh, because I, I want to have, a, what I'm talking about is a very specific part of the deal here. And I'll talk. Uh, and I'll talk about this because the, the the proposal I had was this: now that Disney owns all of these um, assets of Fox's movie and entertainment television uh, divisions, they've got themselves a lot of good uh, pieces that actually maybe some of them they can use for their own distribution, especially with the upcoming release of their streaming service, Disney Plus, I believe it's called. But, of course, there's some pieces that maybe Disney doesn't, wouldn't be the best um, conglomerate company to use them. Much like they were never really great using the Power Ranger. And there's one in particular that... Uh, I keep thinking about that I think Disney has had a much better use for other than distributing themselves. And that is what I would suge have suggested is that Disney would consider using The Simpsons as a bargaining chip. That they could essentially trade the rights to The Simpsons over to NBC Universal in exchange for reacquire for Marvel Studios reacquiring the full rights to the Incredible Hulk. Of course, um, with this Fox acquisition, I think the only pro Marvel properties that Marvel Studios does not yet have the full movie rights to still would now be The Incredible Hulk as owned by NBC Universal and Spider-Man. The movie rights are still technically more or less co-held by Sony, but as we're all aware, they've worked out a deal in that case where both Marvel Studios and Sony um, can produce Spider-Man movies. They haven't been able to work out that type of deal with Universal. As of this time, the, basically the only deals in place is that the Hulk can only appear as a supporting character um, in other people's, in other uh, Marvel movies. He can appear in the Avengers films, obviously he can appear in films uh, drawn by other characters like the Thor movies. He was in Thor Ragnarok, but Marvel Studios cannot um, produce a, another Hulk movie without, uh, that, that they can't, unless it's distributed by Universal in particular. I don't think Universal is interested in that at this time because I do admit the um, Incredible Hulk movie that's part of the MCU did not uh, do very well. And that's the kind of situation where I don't think Universal is doing anything with the property, but they're not willing to relinquish it back to Marvel Studios. Which is why I think that if Disney could use something like The Simpsons to give to NBC, that could be something where NBC now, on paper it looks like um, a, a slanted deal. It, it highly much more favors NBC. But when you really think about it, I think NBC gets a property that I think they could use 
very efficiently, much more than Disney and the more family-friendly image. Meanwhile, Disney and subsequently Marvel Studios reacquires the rights to another Marvel character that they pretty much could use, especially with the very likely scenario that following Avengers Endgame, the next Avengers film, the fourth stage of the MCU is going to involve a lot of changes. And getting them to acquire new characters that are part of the Incredible Hulk franchise, like She-Hulk, for example, could is, will be very useful to them. What I want to bring up here is... Now, I... I brought this question up. I brought this I, this proposal up on the um, on the last Angry Geek fan page on Facebook, and I figured there was going to be some opposition to this. But this one person, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to mention this person by name or even show you the screen caps of what I took down from his responses to this proposal, but I do want to, I do want to, um, I do want to read them off to you just because I know there are some rebuttals, I think, to my idea, but these are some of the most asinine I've ever heard. I'm going to quote you on, I'm going to quote this as I bring up the, um, the, the screen cap image that I've got here. It says, and hold on, let me bring this up as well here, so... One moment. See, that's basically what he says. Or, you know, they would just put The Simpsons on the streaming service and make more money that way than a movie franchise that doesn't make a lot of money. Disney doesn't really care if Marvel is together. I bring up the subject about how even the lesser Marvel movies is going to bring them in at least a half a billion dollars in um, in box office sales alone, not to mention home video sales. Response from this guy. How come Daredevil and Luke Cage was canceled? Was canceled. I'm, I, I shouldn't, I'm, I don't want to belittle this guy for his um, grammar too much, but how come Daredevil and Luke Cage was canceled? And they did that because Feige had more clout than Pearl Merchant did. They didn't do it because they actually care about Marvel. That was his response to my suggestion that um, I think that if Disney didn't care about Marvel, why did they kick Ike Pearl Merchant to the curb, more or less, in preventing him from running Marvel Studios? I think we're all aware of how a lot of people involved with Marvel Studios was not um, on board with Ike per the way Ike Pearl Merchant was handling things, and that, of course, is why in 2015, Disney more or less moved Marvel Studios over to under their watch rather than Marvel Entertainment, basically taking Perlmutter out of the picture as far as running the movie studio is. But yeah, and as he says, also, Hulk was the least money-making movie. They don't need to waste a much bigger potential for profit with The Simpsons. I point out about how I'd wait and see when the stream service comes out in regards to other shows that were canceled. A lot of people were complaining about Pearl Mudger and Disney didn't clearly didn't want him mucking up what's been a huge cash cow for him. Okay, here is his response. Because you're such an expert, reruns are powerful, more so than a character who has only shown up like three times, at least four by my count, actually five, I think, and where the movies themselves clearly aren't that interested in doing much more with. Um, I need to bring up another another image here. One moment. And they don't care about if Marvel is a whole or not. If you think they bought Fox's entire division for a dead movie franchise that was the Fantastic Four and a mediocre franchise left like the X-Men, then you're grossly underestimating that S. And again, if they actually cared, they wouldn't have canceled Daredevil or Luke Cage, which are much more popular than Punisher or Jessica Jones. 
Okay. I wouldn't, I am not going to deny the reality uh, that as itself, the Incredible Hulk was not a huge money-making venture for Marvel Studios beyond being a side character. The idea that you could make some arguments. This is this is what what gets me. I still would think it's possible for what they've done. I I, I still think it, it's uh you could make an argument as to why maybe trading the Simpsons for the Incredible Hulk isn't a good idea. But to suggest here that the Simpsons. In 2019, is a more viable, um, a more viable product than the X Men. I'm trying to say this as nicely as possible, but I seriously wonder what this guy was smoking when he said this. That, that. Disney and Marvel Studios would uh, have the potential to make more money just showing reruns of The Simpsons than making new X-Men movies. And I was against putting the X-Men in the MCU for the longest time because they would take away from the other Marvel characters like the Avengers that helped make the MCU. Now that I know this clear that the Avengers have essentially run their course in the MCU with the conclusion of Avengers Endgame, and they're going to take it, they need more new characters to further the MCU into the next phase. Now, the X-Men might be a good idea for the MCU and Marvel Studios. But, just for crying out loud, to say that Disney could do more with The Simpsons, Let's be honest. The Simpsons went into rigor more than 10 years ago. That's it. It's beyond dead. It's it should have been taken off life support. Uh all of about, about it should have been taken off life support a number of years ago. And yet yeah, it might be possible that if you end the current run of The Simpsons now, put it on the back burner for a few years, and the sit maybe reboot it, maybe it could be revived. But is Disney the studio that's capable of doing that? When they're trying to be probably even more family-friendly and clean-cut, that maybe they even were during Walt Disney's time. Does anyone really think Disney is going to be able to rework The Simpsons in a way that's going to get audiences um, interested in it again? That's going to make it a big thing again, as big as the likes of like South Park or Family Guy, which has basically took what The Simpsons did and took it to another level. And, and oh, uh, uh, we could probably talk about Family Guy. Uh, that's another subject that if Disney now holds it, but that's probably for another time. But And the idea that they could make more money just, um, just airing Simpsons reruns on their streaming service. What has Disney done in the last 15 to 20 years at least... To make anyone think they have any interest in doing reruns. I, I should have I should have double checked this before I went on the air, but I mean, you look at properties they were airing just about ten years or so ago. Um, the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Hannah Montana, Wizards of Waverly Place. I don't think those shows are even airing on Disney XD. Or their main Disney Channel anymore. They've just completely taken them off. To say nothing of, you know, stuff like Kim Possible. The new movie is coming out 
pretty soon the live action adaption, but the original cartoon isn't airing. They've almost buried it. I mean, if Phineas and Ferb is still airing, I'll I give it about another year tops before it gets pulled. Disney, if, if Disney was gonna care about airing reruns. When's the last time they even put the Disney Afternoon shows on the air? Just everything I've seen so far, as far as what Disney has planned for this streaming service, involves creating new properties, new total, sh co completely new shows, mainly with the characters and properties from Marvel, in addition to Lucasfilm and the like. In fact, I think they, they're more focused on that than even making new stuff with Walt's creations. But that's a subject for another time, but just... There's, the, Disney, for the last at least two decades, has shown no indication they have any interest in being a rerun distributor, and especially not with the streaming service. So that's why, more than anything, I would say that I don't think they have much use for The Simpsons. And if they were to use, the, therefore use that as a bargaining chip, you know, much like they used Al Michaels years ago to get him, send him over to NBC in exchange for getting back the rights to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. You remember that whole big deal. They could use something like The Simpsons maybe even Family Guy, to get back some of their, the properties of Marvel and use them for what clearly their focus is. To use um, more other studios of theirs like Lucasfilm and Marvel to produce new content, hopefully in, um, in addition to anything from Walt Disney Animated Studios, Pixar and the like, that... Disney has always looked towards the future and creating new stuff. You're not creating anything new with The Simpsons. So, just like any baseball team that has talent they don't think they can work with, they need to use The Simpsons as a bargaining chip to get more assets that they can use.